Wow, what a tall glass building! Have you ever wondered who lifts such heavy glasses and places them on top of these tall buildings? Hmm, let's Google it. Vacuum lifters? What are vacuum lifters? And how does vacuum have the power to lift such heavy things? Let's do an experiment to solve this mystery. Come with me. Hello friends, I am Albert Einstein and welcome to my lab where you and I will be exploring science beyond your books, around us in things that surround us. So, let's get started. Today's experiment is Candle Tray Lifter. For this experiment, we need five things. Number one, five glasses. One, two, three, four, filled with colored water and the fifth one, empty. Number two, mm-hmm, a wet cloth. Number three, a candle. Number four, a matchbox. And number five, finally, a tray. Let's go. We begin with the wet cloth. Place it in the center of the tray. Now grab the candle and place it on top of the cloth. And now we light the candle. Oh. Mm. Ooh. There you have it. Aha. Now cover the candle with the help of a glass. Just like this. Notice how the flame of the candle goes out. And now we press on the glass from top. <clears throat> hmm. What's happening? What? <sighs> oh, let me put these glasses on top of the tray. Let's find out. Wow! How is this happening? Let's find out. So how can just one glass lift such a heavy tray? Now I know what you might be thinking. Einstein must have glued the glass to the tray. Well, guess what? I didn't. So then how did the glass lift the tray? Is there some magic happening here? Well, think again, because magic it's just science. And this is the science of vacuum. The glass is able to lift the tray by creating a vacuum inside it. So you see, the glass just pulls the tray like a vacuum cleaner pulls things inside it. But what's vacuum? Vacuum is a space that has very low amount of matter or no matter at all. Uh, you know about matter, right? Matter is just the stuff that everything is made up of like the air around us is made up of tiny little air particles. So if vacuum has less matter, this means that our glass has less air particles. But how did we create vacuum inside the glass? Well, two simple steps. Follow me. First, I place this wet cloth in the center of the tray. Just like this. And now, a candle on top of this. Notice how a lot of air particles are surrounding the candle right now. Let's see what happens after we light it. After lighting the candle, the air particles around the candle get heated up and they start running away from each other, leaving only a few air particles around the candle. Now, let me place this glass on top of the candle. When I do this, I will be trapping 
only these few air particles inside the glass. Watch me. And let me just seal the vacuum by putting some pressure on top. Now notice, the oxygen in this trapped air is not enough to keep the flame burning. And so, it dies out and with it, dies the heat inside. And now, the wet cloth takes the lead. It has two important jobs. Number one, to block the air from entering or exiting the glass. Number two, to cool the air inside. As the air particles get cold, they start shivering and they come closer. As they come closer, they contract, leaving an empty space right above. And yes, you got it. This empty space is actually a vacuum that pulls the tray. Isn't this cool? But why is vacuum always trying to pull things inside? Well, let me tell you a secret. Vacuum isn't pulling anything. It's the other things around the vacuum that want to enter and fill the empty space inside. So you see, it's just like two metro coaches. One that's crowded with a lot of people and the other that's empty. Now naturally, the people from the crowded metro would want to rush into the empty one to relax a little bit. And this is exactly what happens in case of our air particles. The air around the glass that has more matter tries to enter inside the glass that has less matter. And we know more matter is equal to more pressure and less matter is equal to less pressure. In this way, air particles try to go from a high pressure zone to a low pressure zone. But our tray and wet cloth do not let this happen. In fact, the air below the tray wants to get inside so badly that it pushes up the tray against the glass. And this is how just one glass is able to lift such a heavy tray. And now you see how similar vacuum lifters are used to carry in place heavy glass windows on tall buildings. In fact, vacuum is so powerful that it can lift hundreds of kgs of metal, glass or wooden sheets in just one go. That's super cool. So friends, remember, vacuum may be low on matter, but it's always high on power. Now that you know this, it's time for you to explore the power of vacuum on your own. So, go grab your things and let's get funneling.